We lived in holes like rats. When we got up there, it's 45 below zero. Can you imagine that, 45 below zero? The last, the last week and two weeks in November, it was 52 below. I'm an old man now and survived the Great Depression in the 20s and 30s, I guess. I survived that and in the World War II, I survived that. And I think it's in our blood to be warriors like the old days. In order to gain rank and status in the tribe, within the uh, families, within the respective uh, uh, men's groups, that you had to uh, maintain a certain level of recognition, distinguish yourself, demonstrate your, your uh, bravery in combat. There was a, a, I believe it was a colonel. He was a colonel of the United States Marine Corps. And he made the comment in the Stars and Stripes, and for a long time I used to have that. But he said, you give me a battalion of Native Americans. And he said, we could probably win this war. And he said, because the Native Americans are used to this guerrilla fighting. And I kind of thought that, you know, because it seemed like we had more stealth. There was more patience, you know, we weren't quick to rush in until we, until we kind of, you know, knew what was happening. And that, and like I said, as, as when I used to run point, I felt like that. You know, uh, I can keep these guys alive because I know what's happening. And, you know, I, and I, I never lost anyone. It was in New Guinea. Well, we chased the enemy up in the mountains. And our leader, the lieutenant and, and the sergeant, while well, they were, they stepped on the mine. They knocked everything out. Here we were. We stayed out there almost a little over a week. When this happened, well, I didn't have anything. The teaching come back to me. I watched the animals, see what they ate, drunk. I've done that. And I told the rest of the crew, they start doing it. We survived for a week. Uh, the suicide plane hit us in the, in the fantail, and uh, I was about from here to that wall on a 40, 40 millimeter. I was a loader, and it come and just took the whole back side of it, and I was about that far from that wall over there, and, and took uh, the whole fantail. And I was, I was, I was in the water. There was two, two more guys were with us there, and, and we were trying to hold them up. And, one, one guy I had, uh, I knew him, he died because he swallowed a lot of uh, oil and uh, diesel fuel. And we was all sick. And uh, we hung on till they come and got us. Our freighter picked us up. And uh, that's a... Uh, They were scary things. It was up. Because when I got on the other side, I could hold my goddamn head up. I come through this son of a bitch with flying colors. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and just like I always tell the wife, you may not sound, you may not look like it, but I said where I've been, and I had ten guys behind me. I had to take care of, never lost the one while I was there with him. I, I look at myself as more of a warrior than a veteran. And I say that because I've fought hand to hand. I know that I've killed my enemy. There's a part that, that has happened in my life that, you know, few can say and maybe won't happen. Maybe for a long time to come. But I tasted my enemy's blood. My enemy's blood blinded me during that time. There's not too many people that might be able to say that. You know, so. These tears, I guess, kind of like, you know, tears of. 
appreciation, prayers, you know, our Creator, He brought me home. And through all the things that, you know, I had been through, 